The Burke is comprised of a historically marginalized population of learners. Students typically are arriving on a fifth grade level. And so our job is to get them on track for graduation, get them on track for state assessment, and get them on track with their peers. I think what's unique about the Burke's approach to intervention is that we put students at the heart of the work. So our intervention model is not based on remediation or holding kids back, but rather having them access the same classes that all the members of their cohort are currently in, while also giving them additional support. We have block schedule and it's a four by four by one block. The one block frees us up with flexibility so that if a need arise in the classroom and we can't address that particular skill level at that time, the one block is free for the taken. Suppose we're in a geometry class, and part of what you need to know to be successful is a little bit of algebra. And we suspect that that might be missing. We don't take the geometry away from the child, but in addition, provide the learner with a refresher of algebra in that one block. If a student is struggling on one standard, they can work on that standard in multiple ways. It gives us more time and freedom within the curriculum to have students have more choice. What we were doing previously is just giving the same level of intervention to all students. And the more that we looked at that and what kind of progress kids were or were not making, it was very clear that we needed to go to a tiered model where we could give different levels of support to different students. We'll give a baseline assessment in September, determine interventions for kids at that point for both math and ELA, and then we'll repeat that process in January. Then after our state test in March, we'll adjust the interventions again. During intervention assignment meetings, we're able to look directly student by student. How did they do on the baseline assessment? We are going to figure out based on how those kids have moved or have not moved in their demonstration of their understanding of our state standards to figure out what intervention they now need. Now that we've identified all those interventions for kids and how are you gonna tweak them, let's make sure we conference with those kids one-on-one -on -one so that they know. If students are showing significant gains, then we can decrease their intervention dosage. I struggled a lot through my freshman year. I wasn't strong in different subjects. I had teachers who were incredible, who taught me that to never give up, and that pushed me further. The Burke has developed me skills to build around the dream I wanted to pursue. There's a lot of staff that you can talk to. You never feel alone here. The relationship building that goes on in the intervention classes creates a safe space for kids to acknowledge that they have struggles and at the same time build them up to master that content and begin to gain the confidence in that content area. Is it close to cutting it in half? Yeah. Yeah. Compare these two real quick. Do you think those are both accurate lines of best fit? Who do you think you need to revise? Oh no, mine's is wrong. She's is right. Why? Because that like cuts. It has most of the points this one doesn't have. So this one's kind of like, it's on like the top of all the data points, but not necessarily like right through the middle. So go ahead and revise that. Now, Jairi, look at your line of best fit and see if you could make a different prediction. We want to make sure the students understand that they have a group of adults in the building who would be there to intervene in any way they can to make sure that they're successful. Early warning indicators are things that we have flagged in in, in the behavior, the attendance, or the classwork that the students might need extra help with. The first student uh, we have is a student that has come up before. We can go around and sort of go over any updates that we might want to include. So in the meeting we discuss what has been successful in a particular classroom and what has been a challenge for the student in the particular classroom. We get the input from each teacher, then we try to figure out potential next steps. We have reallocated our teachers so that this intervention model can work. By adjusting our 
teaching staff down to give extra support in the ninth and 10th grade. It's giving us the classrooms and the time and the space to move our students forward through our intervention model. All the teachers across the school during that intervention enrichment period are teaching. So we're looking at class sizes of about 12 to 15 students with an additional adult in the room to provide additional support for those kids. Time is our greatest resource, right? We look at time as being flexible and adaptive. And so we've constructed a schedule that allows us to do various different things at various different times. Adults would have multiple opportunities to come together during the course of the day to talk about early warning indicators, to talk about content, to talk about looking at student work so they can pinpoint areas in individual children to grow their success. Because our schedule has built-in common planning time for teachers who teach the same content, we're able to meet once a week to do the inquiry process, but we also are free the same time every day. So you can meet with another teacher and plan or discuss an issue that you're having, or workshop a lesson. One of the uh, unique aspects about the inquiry cycle process is teacher-led. They're either looking at student work, providing feedback amongst their peers in terms of their instruction, either via video or, or via someone observed them in one of the classes. Partners play a huge role in us supporting our students throughout the intervention courses. So having an extra adult there to work with them one-on-one -on -one or with a small group and constantly encouraging them goes a long way to changing the student's attitude towards the content and therefore changing their performance level in the content. The key to working successfully with students that have not been successful in their past academic endeavors is to really understand what their needs are and target your work towards addressing those. The greatest way to build capacity is through the development of distributive leadership. Finding qualities in others and growing them and having them take some responsibility. You have to open your heart and open your mind to engaging others. Can't be top down, has to be all of us together. That's what I actually really valued was my teachers. They were there pushing you forward so you could actually get ready for the next big step, which is college.